Shadow Slave. By Guilty 3. Chapter 1245, Smashing Problems with a Hammer. Climbing out of the fissure, the two of them, and the ominous figure of the Sin of Solace, studied the calm surface of the Great River. By now, it seemed like a sea of blood. The patch of red water surrounding the dead behemoth was growing larger as it was slowly washed away. Just then, an ominous shadow moved through the blood, and a giant, cloudy eye rose from the red liquid to stare at them with hatred and burning malice. Sunny shivered and felt the desire to take a step back. Nephi's remained unmoved. After a while, she spoke in a somber tone, strong. He sighed. It is a great beast. Of course, it's strong. At that moment, the sin of Sala smiled. As they escaped the suffocating gaze of the azure serpent by jumping back into the fissure, the sword wraith spoke, but. Isn't it just a great beast? Where is your fighting spirit, Sonny? Go. Kill it. Like you always do. Sonny threw an irritated glance at him and thought, shut the hell up. The apparition laughed. Why? Can't I make a joke? Of course, a pathetic waste of a divine aspect like you has no hope of surviving a fight with this creature. It grinned and added, that is why it's funny. Sonny frowned and glared at the sin of solace, then started to think of a response. However, at that moment, Neff's voice distracted him from the conversation, Sonny. Who are you talking to? Startled, he flinched slightly and turned to her. His face grew slightly more pale than usual. You. You heard that. I spoke it aloud. She lingered for a moment, then nodded. Sonny let out a small laugh and scratched his head, feigning embarrassment. In truth, he was a little frightened, it seems that the effect of the sin of solace on his mind was not as tame as he had thought. Damn it. That. My primary weapon memory has a peculiar enchantment. Basically, it's a voice that doesn't miss a chance to explain how wrong everything I do is. Right. Something like that. Nephi stared at him for a while, and then a hint of a smile appeared on her face. Oh. Sonny frowned. Wait, why are you smiling? It's very annoying. She simply shook her head. It's nothing. I was. Just suddenly reminded of an old fairy tale I once heard. He gave her a dubious look. Really? What is that fairy tale about? Nephi's pondered for a bit, as if trying to recall, then said with uncertainty, it is about a mischievous doll who ran away from home. Every time the doll lied, his nose would grow bigger. And there was a cricket who followed the wooden boy around, trying to explain what is right and what is wrong to him. Sonny blinked a couple of times, perplexed. What kind of weird story was that? And why would a doll be alive? Was it actually an echo? Or a nightmare creature? He frowned. That's one strange fairy tale. I do see why you would remember it, though, not that I have any problems with the length of my nose. So. How does it end? Nephi's thought for a while. I guess the doll learns how to be a good boy and returns home with the cricket. That is not the original ending, though. Sonny felt a little better about himself after hearing that. Curious, he raised an eyebrow and asked, yeah. What happens to the doll in the original, then? She sat down and shrugged with an indifferent expression. N. Dot. Dot. I. N. He kills the cricket with a hammer, then gets hanged from a tree and dies. Sonny's eyes twitched. What the hell? Lowering himself to the ground, he scoffed. That doesn't even make sense. Isn't that doll made of wood? Why would he die after being hanged from a tree? Ridiculous. Not to mention that a talking wooden doll would have been at least a demon. There's no way a demon would die from being hanged. He looked at Nephi's and abruptly realized how ridiculous that conversation was. Sonny cleared his throat, and then added, Anyway. That memory of mine has grown stronger once we entered the nightmare. I have a couple of ideas why, but I'm not certain yet. So, that peculiar enchantment has become more annoying, too. I guess what I'm trying to say is. Don't mind me. However, he couldn't help but glance at the sin of solace and add with a bit of venom in his voice, as for the fairy tale. Now that we established that the doll wouldn't have died from hanging, I must admit, I wouldn't mind smashing that annoying cricket with a hammer and watching it die. The apparition mockingly raised an eyebrow. 
Neff, meanwhile, frowned slightly and asked, Why do you keep looking to the side when talking about that enchantment? Sunny froze. Well. That. At first, there was only a voice. But now there's an illusory figure following me, too. In fact, it looks exactly like me, and uses my own voice to berate me. It's fine, though. Just. Annoying. Nephi's remained silent before asking in an even tone, so. There are two Sunnies here right now. Sunny grimaced, then nodded with a bit of reluctance. In a sense. One is just a foul-mouthed hallucination, though. Neff stared at him for a while with a funny expression. Then, she tilted her head slightly. And stared at him some more. Sonny suddenly felt a bit weird under that gaze. What? Why are you looking at me like that? I'm not crazy. No. What was it hidden in the depths of her calm gray eyes? Was it? Amusement. Nephi suddenly took a deep breath, and then shook her head. I know that you are not crazy. That memory should be the sin of solace, right? It is tied to Ariel, and, therefore, to the tomb of Ariel. Even though the pyramid doesn't seem to exist in this nightmare, it might come in handy. Sonny slowly exhaled. Right. Nephi's had access to the list of his memories, so she would know about the sin of solace. But that reminded him. Growing serious, Sonny said in a somber tone, speaking of which. I think we should try to figure out where we are. And, more importantly, why we are here. I think that if we pull all the information we have together, we might be able to find out a few things. She nodded. Okay. I was thinking the same thing. There have to be hints in the descriptions of some of the memories we received during the chain of nightmares. I can tell you which ones of mine seem important. Sunny too thought that this was the best course of action, at least for now, the Azure Serpent didn't seem to have plans of climbing onto the carcass of the Black Turtle, and the current was pulling it downstream. Even if they tried to fly away, their speed wouldn't be much greater than that of the Dark Island. So, they might as well try to better understand the situation first. However. He gathered his willpower, hesitated for a few moments, and forced out an indifferent smile, uh. Before that. I think you should summon a new armor memory. So, you know. This one could restore itself. Nephi's frowned, then looked down at herself. The black garments she wore were singed and torn, revealing more than a fair bit of her smooth alabaster skin. She remained motionless for a bit, then shifted slightly. Turn AR, can you turn around? She phrased it as a question instead of a request, but Sunny nevertheless obediently faced the wall of the fissure. I can. After a moment of awkward silence, another question followed, can you also make your shadow turn around? He forced the gloomy shadow to face the black rock, too. No problem. The sin of solace rolled his eyes, then shook his head and followed their example. You are a pitiful man, Sonny. You know that. Ah, don't bother responding. Gods, I wish you did squish me with a hammer. Then, I wouldn't have to endure your. Sonny ignored him. Soon, the dark fissure became a little brighter, Neff's clothes turned into a swarm of white sparks. Then, the fissure was illuminated again as she summoned another armor. Sunny let out a shaky breath. What is this sense of deja vu? Are you done? She answered after a short pause, yeah. He smiled. All right. Let's do some research, then. Chapter 1246, Research Partners Nephi's changed from her torn clothes and was now wearing a white tunic with its hems embroidered in intricate red patterns. The tunic was somewhat similar to Sunny's Shroud of Dusk, but also different, it seemed like a single sheet of light fabric that had been elaborately tied at the shoulders, and thus had no sleeves. Loosely fastened at the waist and with high slits, it seemed like something that could afford one a high degree of freedom of movement. Still, Sonny was slightly surprised to see what Neff had chosen to summon. She gave him a strange look. What? He shrugged. I just imagined that you would select a suit of steel armor, or at least something that offers more protection. There has to be a memory like that among those that Summer Night gave you, right? Nephi shook her head. There is. But what does it matter here? No matter how powerful of an armor memory I use, it will still break after brushing against a great abomination once. So, I might as well go for something light and offering good utility. 
This tunic might not protect me well, but it enhances my senses. For now, that is more important. Best of all. She slightly pursed her lips and added with a hint of frustration in her voice, it won't burn. Sunny suppressed a chuckle. All right. Suit yourself. It was not like he had anything to complain about. That tunic of hers was rather beautiful. Plus, he wasn't one to talk, considering what he himself was wearing. Sonny pulled his gaze away from Neff's slender figure and stared at the memories that were laying on the ground between them. These were all the ones in their possession that mentioned Ariel, his tomb, the Great River, or an estuary of any kind. There was no real need to summon them, since both Sonny and Nephi's could see each other's runes. However, having something to look at was more convenient. They were, a beautifully engraved chalice of white stone full of black liquid. A hand mirror of dark silver that gave off an ominous feeling. A graceful gen with a long and slender blade of pristine white jade. A necklace of engraved black metal that resembled a collar. An elegant mallet with a hammerhead made of perfectly black stone. A dagger made of cloudy steel with a handle that was wrapped in black leather. The bitter cusp, the mirror of truth, the sin of solace, the stifled scream, the dark shaper, and the falling ash. The last two came from Nephi's, while all the other ones came from Sunny, he had spent more time in Antarctica, after all, and received more memories from the abominations of the chain of nightmares. There was also the shroud of graceless dusk, but Sonny did not feel like undressing. Although it might have been only fair for him to do so. Never mind. He studied the memories for a while, sometimes glancing at the shimmering runes in front of him. Eventually, Sonny said, before we try to draw any conclusions, let's go over what we already know first. Nephi's nodded. Sonny took a deep breath. First of all, there was a daemon called Ariel, the Demon of Dread. The tomb of Ariel stands somewhere in the Nightmare Desert, however, it is not a tomb where Ariel is buried. Rather, it is a tomb that he built. He remained silent for a moment, then continued, the seven of us entered a seed of nightmare that seemed to have originated from the tomb of Ariel. However, instead of being transported into the past of the Nightmare Desert, we somehow ended up in the middle of a strange and boundless river. It was not certain that the Great River was boundless, Sonny had not tried to reach its seemingly unattainable shores yet, after all. However, it was definitely incredibly vast. He frowned. That river seems to be the Great River, which is said to exist outside of time and flow endlessly from the future into the past. Whatever that means. The Great River is connected to the Tomb of Ariel, somehow. But we don't know how exactly. After finishing, Sonny lingered a bit, and then asked, anything you want to add. Nephi's nodded. The nightmare we entered is an abnormal one. The vision of the reverse time was interrupted. Additionally, there are supposed to be millions of challengers within it. Apart from that. She glanced at the strange sky of the great river, where dawn coexisted with dusk and day, and at the seven suns bathing the world in light. Then, Nephi said, this place looks like a colossal soul sea. Sunny's eyes glistened. Right. That was what I thought, as well. He sighed, and then picked up the dagger forged out of cloudy steel, the falling ash. Weighing it in his hand, Sonny glanced at its complicated weave, and then turned to the runes. Memory, falling ash, memory rank. At the same time, Nephi's looked at his own memories for a while, and then tentatively picked up the mirror of truth. She glanced at her reflection, shivered, then turned the mirror around and studied the beautiful engravings on its back. Her eyes darted from side to side, most likely reading the runes that described the meeting between Weaver and Ariel. After a few moments, a contemplative expression appeared on Neff's face. This one is interesting. I think it is important. It can help us understand the nature and purpose of the tomb of Ariel. However, it doesn't tell us anything about the Great River. She put the Mirror of Truth aside and reached out for the bitter cusp. This one is connected to the sin of solace and the falling ash, I think. Sonny nodded as he read the description of the Ashen Dagger. The runes read, Ariel built a beautiful palace of jade for the queen, and there, she held her court. A great bridge of stone led to the jade palace, covered in snow and ash. Soon, the news of the queen's beauty and wisdom spread across the realms, and many guests came to witness her grace. Not all of them survived the snow, and even fewer survived the ash. Still, more and more came. He frowned. 
The description of the sin of solace told of a beautiful monster that Ariel had made a queen and gifted with the sinister knowledge of hideous truth. The description of the bitter cusp told the eerie story of a group of guests that came to the jade court with ill intentions. And this one told about how Ariel had built the jade court. The jade palace. For the jade queen. None of that information was particularly useful for them now, except maybe for the fact that Ariel seemed fond of building things. However. Sunny glanced at Nephi's and showed her the dagger. That jade palace. Doesn't it sound like Ravenheart? Ravenheart, the great citadel of Clan Song, was situated among snowy peaks and raging volcanoes. Snow and ash were always falling there. And, more than that, one had to cross an enormous stone bridge to reach it. The description of the Jade Palace was too similar. Neff looked at the falling ash. Then, her eyes glinted a little. It does, n. Dash, 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 one, n. Sunny was a bit stunned. He had learned some time ago that the citadels of the great clans were left behind by the seven demons, and were thus very important to the sovereigns. So were the ivory tower, which had once belonged to Hope, and the hollow mountains, where nether citadel still remained undiscovered. That was why Valor and Song had been racing to conquer the tomb of Ariel. But. If the citadel left behind by Ariel was actually Ravenheart. Then which daemon was tied to the Black Pyramid? Who could be more connected to the tomb of Ariel than its builder? Feeling confused, Sonny shook his head and tried to concentrate on the task at hand. Right now, they had to learn about the Great River the most. Because that was where they were stuck. Putting the falling ash back, he picked up the Dark Shaper, which looked like an elegant mallet with its head made of perfectly black stone. In fact, that black stone looked very familiar. Sonny studied the weave of the black mallet, then glanced at its runes. A few moments later, his eyes widened.